Hello, I'm Rosalind Bass and I'm a librarian based in the Templeman Library in Canterbury. This 15 minute presentation is aimed at students in the final year of their thesis. It outlines some of the things that you may need to think about in relation to copyright and open access in your thesis. I'm going to give you the answers to some of those questions and summarise the other places you can go to to find more details, guidance and advice. So the first thing to mention is that when you finish your thesis it will be available in the Kent Academic Repository or CAR as I'm going to refer to it from now on. After you've submitted your thesis um, you've completed your viva, you've made all your necessary corrections and amendments you will receive a letter from your school congratulating you and telling you that you are going to be awarded your thesis degree. In that letter, you will be instructed to upload your thesis to CAR. You do this in Moodle via Thesis Deposit Point, which is in the postgraduate section in your school's Moodle. And from Moodle, your thesis goes automatically straight through to CAR. So what's CAR? CAR is an online archive of the outputs produced by all University of Kent staff and research postgraduates. So it has two functions. It's an, uh, an online registry or archive so it's of use for the institution for um, promotion, measuring, and it's also a means of achieving open access. Open access means making the results of research freely and publicly available online so that anybody anywhere in the world can access the results of those research, of that research. So here at the University of Kent, um, while you're students or staff members, you have access to a huge amount of resources because the library pays a lot of money for all sorts of subscriptions to journals, ebook packages, databases, etc. But when you're no longer part of the university, a lot of that content you can't access. And that's what open access aims to solve. So within CAR, there are two types of information. There's bibliographic information about the publications and outputs produced by the University of Kent staff and students. But there's also the full text of articles, book chapters, conference presentations um, and files of research outputs that are produced in <coughs> the less traditional way. This video here on this page this PhD comic here video is provides a really good explanation of what open access is all about and why it matters and what it's aiming to achieve. And also on this web page is other information about the different routes to open access what funders require, etc. which may be a bit detailed for you right now, but it's worth knowing about and having a look. So all of this matters to you because when your thesis is in CAR, the full text will be available over the internet. And I'm going to demonstrate what I mean. So here's the Kent Academic Repository. If I search for this thesis down here, so that's the summary information and this is the landing page for the thesis so you can see what it looks like. Here you have the option to download the full text of the thesis. The other thing that's worth knowing about is that if you do an advanced search in CAR, you can specifically search for theses 
that have been produced at the University of Kent. So the under item type, if you select thesis, you can pull up all the theses for the university since 2014, when theses were first started be being submitted to the Kent Academic Repository. You can either wish to narrow it down by date or by your school, but I won't do so in this case. So here you can see them all displayed, it's worth having a look through them and going through and seeing the options for access that other students have decided upon. So the other thing that's worth mentioning is that because of the standards that the Kent Academic Repository meets, theses and the contents of CAR will be found by the major search engines. So for instance, if we go to Google and search for thesis that we just saw in CAR, there it is, pretty high up on the search results in Google. And the content of CAR will also show in the British Library's Index of Theses ethos. So your thesis entry will also be displaying by that search engine. OK, <clears throat> so some of the questions to ask yourself. First of all, do you know who owns the copyright in your thesis? Well, the answer is that in the majority of cases at the University of Kent, you do. You own the rights to publish, uh, distribute, share and copy your thesis because it's defined as a scholarly work. And that's the case for all scholarly work produced by staff and research students here at this university. Material produced as a result of teaching um, belongs to the university. Now, there are a couple of exceptions that you might want to consider. The first is if you have a, a particular sponsor or funder for your thesis, you may well have reached some agreement whereby you were going to transfer copyright to that funder or sponsor. So that's worth checking out. And secondly, if your supervisor or supervisors have put a significant amount of work into the thesis, it may be that you need a discussion with them about a copyright issue. But in the majority of cases, you will own copyright. So the second question then, bearing in mind that the full text of your thesis is now going to be available freely online, is have you used other people's work in your thesis? Now, you no doubt have. Now, when you were um, an undergraduate or a to taught postgraduate, provided you referenced other people's material properly, there was no problem because your essay or dissertation was only ever going to be available within the University of Kent. But now that your thesis is going to be publicly available online, you need to give the matter more careful consideration. So you're obviously going to have used other people's content. You might have used images, charts, graphs, diagrams, data and extensive quotations. In which case, there's another checklist of questions that you probably need to go through. It may be that copyright in that, ma that material has expired, so it's fine for you to use it in your thesis online. If you have a look at our copyright page, this section here, using copyright works, goes through the different levels um, the details for expiry of copyright for different types of work. So that's one question to ask yourself. The other thing is that it may be that that work has a clear statement on it, that it's OK for you to use it um, and share it. There might be a statement at the bottom of the web page, at the bottom of the article that you're looking at. Um, it might have something called a Creative Commons license which I'll go into in more detail a bit later on. So it may be that it's clear that you have permission to reuse that material, provided you reference it correctly. 
So if neither of those, um, if neither of those um, apply, then it may be that you can rely on what's called the fair dealing exception. So this is an exception under UK copyright law, which states that it's okay for you to use other people's material for the purposes of um, criticism and review. So in other words, provided you're not going to make money out of it. So it may be that, um, again, provided you reference the, the um, authors, the owners of that copyright, there's absolutely no problem in you using it in your thesis. Now, a good test of whether or not you think that is reasonable is to ask yourself, if somebody else was using your work in the same way, would you be happy about that? Is it reasonable? Now, if none of those three apply, it may be that you need to seek permission from the copyright owner to ask if you can use it in your thesis and make it available online. So you need to leave yourself plenty of time to acquire that permission. It might be quite difficult to find out who is the owner of the copyright um, and where that, who, what their contact details are. It's also possible that they may want money uh, to, to reproduce it, in which case you need to be asking yourself the question, is that relevant? Um, is it suitable for your purposes um, for a thesis? In which case, if none of the four apply, it may be that you decide you want to remove sections from your thesis. This is called redaction. Um, so if there are elements that contain material and um, it, copyright hasn't expired, you can't get permission, um, it's not available on an open access basis, and you feel that it is not um, reasonable to rely on the um, exception, then you can remove those sections from your thesis, redacted. In this case, when you deposit your thesis in Moodle, you're given an option to deposit two copies. You will deposit the full copy of your thesis that contains the whole content, and that remains restricted within CAR so that it won't be available to the public. You deposit a second copy where you have removed the sections that you don't want to share and make available online. Um, and that copy of your version will be publicly available. OK, so another thing to keep in mind is whether or not you intend to publish your thesis as an article or a book or chapter. Now. A lot of people worry that publishing, having their thesis available online is going to affect their chances of having it published in the future. Now, often this isn't the case because your thesis is going to require a significant amount of work to change the content from the thesis into an article or a book or a book chapter. So there's a, there's a um, a significant amount of difference between the content of your thesis and something that you're going to get published. You will still have to do a, a lot of work on it. There's also evidence that um, a lot of publishers don't consider having your thesis available online prior publication. So a lot of publishers won't, um, won't think it's a problem um, that you have a thesis available. You can have a look at this blog post, which goes into more detail about this. However, if you are concerned about it um, and you are engaged with negotiations with publishers and they say that they would like you to restrict access to your thesis for a short period of time, then you can do so. You can apply something called an embargo, which means that your thesis will not be available for a period of one year or a period of three years, and after that time, um, the embargo will automatically be released and it will become publicly available. And you get the option to apply a one year or a three year embargo when you upload your thesis in Moodle. You're also able to contact us in the library to remove or extend or alter that embargo period. Oh, 
after you've deposited your thesis, um, <coughs> if, you, um, if you've made your, your thesis publicly available and you were then writing an article or a book chapter and had conversations with your publisher and they've referred you to restrict it for a short period of time, you can get in touch with us in the library and we can do that for you. Or um, on the other hand, you restricted it um, and then you did publish an article sooner than you thought, you can get in touch with us and we can remove that embargo. If you do imply, apply an embargo to your thesis, it's worth thinking about the implications. Um, because to a certain extent, it might narrow your options. Um, people aren't going to be able to read it and ask to collaborate with you. You're going to be less able to promote your work. Um, it may actually diminish your opportunities to a certain extent. Have a look at that blog post, it will explain it in more detail. Some of you may be writing theses that involve material of um, a sensitive or confidential nature. In some cases, if it's just small sections, you can redact it and remove it, as I mentioned earlier, but sometimes it's it's enshrined, it's right through the, the text of the thesis. In this case, you can restrict access to your thesis permanently, forever. To do this, there's a form that you can download in Moodle or via web page, and you need a conversation with your supervisor and your director of graduate studies. You submit the form to us. When you um, deposit your thesis in Moodle, you select the three-year embargo period. When you receive the form, we will apply a permanent embargo to your thesis. Some of you may well have been lucky enough to have already published um, um, so a section or sections of your or chapters of your thesis may be the same as a journal article that already exists. In this case, the first thing to do is to make sure that a version of your article is in CAR. It may well have been submitted, deposited by um, your, your supervisor, the person that you collaborated with when you wrote your article. If it isn't in CAR, then you can use our service, this online form. We offer a service to put the article into CAR for you. So on this page, there's a form here that allows you to send us your author's accepted manuscript of your article and we will put it into CAR for you. So. If you have your manuscript in CAR, the best thing to do is if, if the chapter is a direct copy of your published article, is to remove that section and just say that this chapter is published as, give the details of the publication and link through to CAR. And there will be available the version of the article that you are permitted to share. It's worth having a look at this service, Sherpa Romeo, which allows you to check the permissions, the um, copyright policies and permissions that publishers give in relation to individual journal titles. So for instance, um, you can look up the journal that you have published in or intend to publish in and it gives you specific information about what you can and can't do with that article once it's published. The most common situation is for them to say that they do not permit you to use their final published version, the version with all their formatting, typesetting, logos, but they are happy for you to use something called the postprint or the author's accepted manuscript. Now that's the version that doesn't have the publisher's typesetting um, formatting work on it, but does have all of your content. So all the final revisions, corrections and amendments after peer review. So it's the full text, the text, the content of the article um, is complete and you're happy with it, but it doesn't have the publisher formatting. The majority of cases you're permitted to put that into something like the Kent Academic Repository and use an embargo. So this is worth looking at. If you use that service that I referred to earlier, we can sort all that out for you. <coughs> um, 
right so something else is to consider is what terms do you want to make your thesis available under what do you want people to do or not do with your thesis when it's available in car and to do this you can use something called a creative commons license which makes it clear to users how you wish people to use your thesis so the most common sort of license is this one called cc by in which case you say that users are permitted to share reuse distribute build upon your work provided they attribute you so provided they say it is by you but there are other more restrictive options that you can include in your license so for instance nd says that you are not happy for anyone to um, produce any derivatives from your work you can say um, this use this nc clause which means that you're not happy for your thesis to be used in any commercial sense okay so Another question is, what about your data? What about all the stuff that you've produced in the course of your research? Um, and don't necessarily think about data just as spreadsheets and statistics. You could have all sorts of accompanying files that help to validate the findings of your thesis um, and might be useful for you to refer to yourself in the future or for future collaborators. It might be useful for people to build upon your work. Now, we have something called a Kent data repository here at Kent, which your um, data and accompanying files can go into. You also need to be thinking about how you're going to manage, tidy up and look after those files. So it might be that you don't, it's not appropriate to retain and keep all of them. Um, they needed to be they need to tie need to be tidy and organized and they need to have um, some relevant information that enables users to understand how you created those files um, and how they relate to your thesis guidance about what to do your accompanying files is available from us and outlined here There's lots of information here about how to manage your data What will happen is that uh, the, the files will be in the Kent data repository and the entry in the Kent data repository will provide a reference through to the Kent academic repository and vice versa. And it may well be that you want to put your files in another data repository that isn't the University of Kent one and that's fine too. We can link your entry up to the entry in your thesis in the Kent academic repository. We also teach about research data management as part of the postgraduate research and development programme. So you might want to sign up for one of those sessions. OK, so. The questions that I've outlined just now um, over the course of this presentation. And what you want to do about them. Really revolve around these essential questions as to who do you want to read your work? How widely available do you want it to be? What do you want to happen as a result of your research? And what do you want people to be able to do with your work? It's also worth summarising some of the advantages to making your thesis available in CAR. So it will make your thesis highly visible. It means that you have um, a stable and permanent URL that you can use to promote your work. And you can refer potential collaborators or employers to. You can put it on um, job applications, um, CVs, um, use it in social media. It means that your thesis is um, preserved in the long term and ensures it's accessible. It also protects you against plagiarism as it's a registration stamp, really, of the fact that you produced that research at that date at this institution. So, in a sense, it's um, protection for you because a reference copy is publicly available. You can also look at a dashboard and see how often your thesis is downloaded. And there's evidence that your research is more likely to be read and cited if it is available open access. So when I referred earlier to 
embargo period and your choice of one or three years do you want to use one that might seem like the easy safe answer but it has got implications so if you've embargoed your thesis people are not going to be able to read it and they won't be able to start citing you so it might reduce your opportunities to a certain extent okay so all the information is available on the library's pages about depositing your thesis so I've given the full URL here <coughs> the summary page outlines the things that I've just talked about in this presentation and then there's a lot more detail about the practicalities um, copyright all the things that I mentioned in this section here there's a print guide that is available from the grad school and there are two teams in the library that can help you the research support team so here are the individuals that work on that in the library and this is me And this is our email address um, and the copyright team based in the library and that email address. And also, of course, make sure that you have a conversation with your supervisor. <coughs>